Good afternoon, everyone. Hello again, and thank you for joining me. We are in week two. This week, we'll be talking about asylum. I distinguish between asylum and refugee, but for this week, we'll only be talking about the asylum application. Whenever I counsel a client, I, I always try to figure out what are their options. What legal basis do they have in order to get, obtain, or maintain legal status within the United States? Many individuals arrive in the United States either on a visitor's visa or they arrive on an employment visa. They can still qualify for asylum. Asylum is the individual saying essentially, look, if I were to go back to my home country, I will be persecuted. Typically, I'll ask the questions, the who, the what, the where, the when, the why. I ask these questions because these are important in putting together and submitting a successful asylum application. Keep in mind that only about between 3 and 5% of these applications will be approved. There are different ways to file your asylum application. If you've arrived in the United States legally, you can still afford file your application. If you've arrived in the United States illegally, that is you snuck across the border, you are still eligible to file an asylum application with the United States Citizen and Immigration Services. A lot of the myth I hear is um, my asylum ap application will be denied. That is a myth only because each asylum application is case specific. In my next video, I'll talk about the two different ways in which you can file your asylum application, either the affirmative application or the defensive application. It doesn't matter where or how you file the application, the qualifications will be the same. We will have to make sure that you have a well-founded fear of persecution, and this has to be based on your race, your religion, and some other factors that the service will look to, or for that matter, the immigration judge. Join me in video number two as I talk about the actual application, whether it's affirmative or whether it's defensive, because that will determine where you file your application. My name is attorney Diani Winter Funde, and I'm an immigration law practitioner in the state of Florida. I, continue, I ask you to continue to like and share my videos and schedule a consultation with me if you have further questions. Until next time, my friends, walk good. Hello everyone, my name is attorney Diani Winter Funde and I am an immigration practitioner in the state of Florida. I started out my career by delving into humanitarian visas, so when it came time for the month of October, recognized also as pro bono month, it was very important to me to cover humanitarian visas. In my last video, I talked about the different ways in which you can file your asylum application. There are two processes for asylum application and it depends on your current situation. We have an affirmative application and we also have a defensive application. Now if you've arrived in the United States lawfully and under the statute you've only been here 12 months or less, however you're not in any kind of proceedings, in other words the government is not trying to remove you from the United States, then you're eligible if you have a fear of persecution, you are eligible to file an affirmative application in that you are the one that is putting yourself in the crosshairs of our immigration system. Compare that to the cousin, the defensive application. It means that you're currently going through some kind of proceeding. What does that mean? The United States government has brought removal proceedings against you. They're trying to remove you from the United States. For many of my clients that are in removal proceedings, I always screen them to see if at some point they have a fear of persecution. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, the 12-month process has passed. Remember, all asylum applications must be filed within 12 months after you enter the United States. As a practitioner, 
we can get around the 12 month um, limitation by saying there have been some changed circumstances in your home country. So when you're thinking about filing a, a, an asylum application, I always encourage you to work with an experienced practitioner. These are very complicated and very tricky applications. We want to make sure that you fit statutorily within the, de the definition of an asylee, in that you belong to a particular race or you were persecuted because of your race, but you were persecu persecuted because of your religion, or you were per persecuted because you belong to a particular social group. So these are things that we have to be able to overcome. When you file your asylum application in court, the defensive application, keep in mind, you will be cross-examined. The opposing counsel, the United States attorney, will be asking you a ton of questions. So it's important that even after you file your application, you continue to work with your attorney so that you can make sure you're prepared for whether your interview or you are prepared for your individual hearing. Again, my name is attorney Diani Winterfunde. Continue to like, follow, and share. And until next time, my friends, walk good. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We are at the end of week two and this is our last video on asylum application. I always caution you, these videos are only intended to whet your appetite and that you should be working with an experienced practitioner that practices in this area. Let's talk about the interview for your asylum application. If you have filed an affirmative application and that you're not in removal proceeding, you will be entitled to a work authorization um, only because the process for these applications takes such a long time. You have to remain vigilant to make sure that you receive all your notices, to make sure that you have taken your biographic, your fingerprints, and that you know where your interview will be held. If you're in the state of Florida, your asylum office is located in Miami. Asylum interviews can take upwards of three to four hours. So I caution you to review your application before you go to your interview. If you have filed a defensive application and that you are in removal proceedings and you are using asylum as a defense to be removed from the United States, then your interview, your individual hearing will be in front of the immigration judge. This process can be super intimidating, which is where working with an experienced practitioner comes into play. For either process, you will have an answer at the end of the interview or at the end of the individual hearing. If you have been found to have a well-founded fear in that your asylum application is approved, you will then be entitled to apply for a green card within one year after that positive hearing. After four years, you can then apply for United States citizenship. So in a nutshell, Asylum visas are available for individuals. Make sure that you fall within the statutory guidelines and make sure that you're working with competent counsel. My name is attorney Diani Winterfunde and until next time my friends, walk good.